morning, everybody, and welcome. I'm glad you could make it out. Um, this is honestly probably the um, best received college and copy of the year because you get to hear from the true experts back there about what their experience has been with um, summer opportunities. So I'm happy that, that many of you got here, and hopefully we'll have a few more people coming in. Um, we, we do want to start this morning uh, with a couple of adult guests who have to get um, elsewhere. But as, as you may have read in the uh, CTW and the email reminder yesterday, this particular um, college and copy is about summer opportunities. So keep having your children find something to keep them productive in the summer. Um, you know, and hopefully what you'll hear from from these um, students is that you know it, it, it should be something that is um, very interesting and exciting for them because it is their summer and, and their friends are at the beach so um, you know it can be both things it can be both um, productive and interesting and, and enjoyable so again welcome for being here and I'm going to turn it over to to actually Good morning, everybody. Excuse my, my relatively casual attire. We have emergency drill today, so I was dressed for the emergency drill <laughs> my tennis to go down on the field. Um, I'm the summer programs director and the director of the Center for Excellence here at Chaminade. Um, about six years ago, I guess this is our sixth year, we began a program which we refer to lovingly as CIT. It's our counselors and training program. And over the past six summers, we have had an opportunity to bring in students as young as eighth grade, rising eighth graders, into the CIT program and help train them to work with the campers and the students that we have here during the summer. It's a wonderful opportunity for our students to show our guests, especially our young guests and their families, what it's like to be part of the Chaminade family. Um, and as the students grow through the CIT program year over year, they gain more and more leadership responsibility. Um, they're responsible for training younger CITs, and they're also responsible for working in classrooms with teachers and assisting with developing lessons and presenting lesson plans. Some of them also coach and work with kids in everything from mock trial camp to volleyball camp and soccer camp, so students who are athletes do come in and share their love of sport with our younger students. And um, we have seen time and time again, of course, that students who are consistently involved in a summer activity that grows over time is something that universities like to see. That's one of the things that the counselors have, have recognized and that admissions officers say. We want to see a student who's committed to something right time and time again and to see their, um, their interests and their leadership opportunities grow through those programs. So we do that. The other thing we do during the summer here is offer workshops and intensives in a number of areas, um, theater or performing arts programs, dance, aerial, etc. All of those programs do offer intensives during the summer, which gives students an opportunity to engage in different things. If you're in tech during the regular school year, for example, in theater, sometimes the summer intensive is a great opportunity for students to move over from tech into performance. Um, so some of those things are wonderful. We also offer a couple of courses to get ahead for students who are interested in expanding some of their um, academics or some of their other co-curricular activities during the school year. So during the sophomore year, the students do take an additional writing class and during their senior year they do that as well, each time a semester. Those courses are offered during the summer to get ahead, so students who are in performing in visual arts, who may be in speech and debate, who may be in robotics, etc., have an opportunity to take additional courses during the school year and open up that space in their schedule. So those are some of the opportunities that we have in the Center for Excellence during the summer here at Sharmana. Thank you. Um, next we have Ms. Shana Sedek from our campus ministry to talk about opportunities in the summer with the um, Oh, good morning, everybody. Um, so nice to see you all here this Wednesday. Um, as Ms. Gallon said, I'm the director of the campus ministry here at the high school campus. And um, as you all know, hopefully, um, there's an apostolic works service component um, that we have for each grade level. Um, 
what we can do in the summer is to continue that passion for service, hopefully. Um, hopefully that wouldn't just last within you know, the August to May time frame. So we really encourage students to go out and to use their passions, their talents, their blessings, their skills um, to serve others. Um, some different ways to do that um, could be through organizations that they're already connected to. But in the summertime, it's a great opportunity to kind of go out of what you're normally used to, right? Because you've got usually a little more time. So we really encourage students to try and try something different. Um, go with your friends, right? You can all go together. Serving others with others is even more fulfilling and satisfying and fun when you do it with a group of people. So some places you can go would be local homeless shelters, food banks, um, parks and rec. There's many different programs offered through the city um, that they can help with. Um, different religious organizations through your temple or your church, um, wherever you feel connected in, in that way. Um, hospitals, although we do ask, really the only requirement in terms of um, approval of a site is that it's a nonprofit organization that isn't contrary to church teachings. Hospitals and things like convalescent homes are exceptions to that rule. Um, so that's a good time. A lot of hospitals look, um, they have to have training and such like that, so the summer might be a good time to try and look into those for the school year as well. Um, things like Habitat for Humanity, working in, in schools like with Chaminade and our um, Center for Excellence is a way to as well. Um, in campus ministry, we do have um, ourselves that we could um, talk with your students about if they're not sure where to start or um, what places that they'd like to serve to. We have a binder in there that they can look at as well. There's a website called laworks.com that you can search for local opportunities. You can search by zip code, so if you know you want them to be closer to where you're working and you can search through that zip code or where you live or near Chaminade and you can get an idea of different opportunities that are available geographically. Um, because we uh, do conduct our apostolic work in a service learning model, um, we can apply up to half of the hours that you serve in the summer towards your next year's expectation. So for freshmen, their expectation is 15 hours Sophomores is 15 hours, juniors are 20, and seniors are 25. So you can apply, you can serve as many hours as you want, but you'll just apply up to half of that for your next year's expectation. Okay? Um, we do uh, track our hours through a service called X2 Ball. Students should be very familiar with that if they're not for some reason. Send them down to campus ministry and we can help walk them through a claim. Um, and to show them what they should be looking for as well. Now, the only exception to um, that half expectation um, uh, application is the Shamanad Center for Excellence. Um, so if your student does serve uh, a full week, at least one full week, in the Center for Excellence through that CIT program that Mrs. Stone was just talking about, they will fulfill their whole apostolic works expectation for the year. The reason being is that we do have a teacher that takes them through all the same steps that you would go through in the normal school year. So they go through a discernment, they create an action plan, they serve, they do reflective components. Um, and so that's all um, comprehensively done with the Center for Excellence um, during that time. Okay. So thank you so much. If you ever have any questions, please give us a call in Campus Ministry or feel free to email me. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So my name is Mr. Borchard. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about some of the other opportunities that we would suggest that your students look into. Now, like we were saying, there's a wide variety of things they can get involved in. Ultimately, we want them getting involved in something that they, they're passionate about, that they can get something out of, that they enjoy doing. During the summer, it's hard to get up. You might as well make it something that you want to get up for, that you're passionate about. Um, so one way is to get a job, all right? Um, as students get older, they have opportunities to get employment at various locations. I have students that work at movie theaters. Um, I have some students that work at different um, juice bars, students that work at Stone Fire. You know, there's a lot of opportunities out there. So sometimes, you know, they'll find something that's close to their house um, that they enjoy going to, gives them some source of income, which a lot of students like. Uh, and it gives them ex real life experience. And what, how that relates to college is,
colleges like to see that students are using their time to be productive, to get themselves out into that real world. They're not just in the bubble of school. You know, they're, they're looking outside the bubble of school, and that's what getting a job does. Um, so that's one great thing they can do. I've had students that really enjoyed working at a place and they got letters of recommendation when it came to applying to colleges. You know, you get your boss to write you a letter of recommendation, that shows a college, you know, they're a great student, but they're also a fantastic employer, which is something that colleges like to see. Okay, so getting a job is a great opportunity. Um, summer study and career exploration. So, kind of similar, the career explore, exploration is usually something that you're not going to necessarily get paid for. It's a type of internship, and a lot of times this is going to be formed by connections. You know, internships a lot of times are just from people you know. You know, maybe it's your uncle's friend or something along those lines, but it gives them some time to really make sure that that's the direction they want to go. You know, a lot of times we ask students, what do you want to be? Oh, I, want to, I want to go into medicine. Okay, now do you really, or is that just what you've heard? You know, so sometimes this is an opportunity to go and make sure that that's something they're really passionate about. And I always have students that come back and say, I really thought I wanted to go into accounting. And I did an internship over the summer at an accounting firm, and that's not for me. You know, so it's a good time for them to figure out if it is something they like or not like. Um, the summer study. So if they don't want to get a job or something like that, maybe they want to continue their education. All right, I have a student that loved architecture and wanted to do that, and so they would take classes over the summer. We've had students that took a class over the summer at a JC to study Japanese because they had hopes of going overseas to Japan and they wanted to get kind of a background on that. Uh, they wanted to further their math skills, and so maybe they took an additional math course. Now, that can't let them get ahead, but maybe it was in a different area. Maybe it was um, a different type of business class or something that we don't offer here. You know, so taking the summer to take a course online, or not online, but like at a local community college is great. Oftentimes it's free or really discounted because they're high schoolers. Um, other places, a lot of the universities offer programs. UCLA is really known for having a great high school program. They have, offer a variety of different classes. You can do anything from studying different kinds of medicine to uh, business entrepreneurship. And those are high school courses designed for high school students that are ran either by grad students, um, sometimes are professors, you know, so that would be another opportunity. I, um, I think one of our students, they took classes at Stanford. They went up there and took some courses there, and they found it very helpful. So, you know, if there is something they're interested in, and they don't want to get a job in it maybe right now, maybe taking a course to just further their knowledge in that. And when they apply to colleges, that looks good because it shows them hey, they're really interested in this area and they're willing to take the extra steps to get more knowledge before going to college. Um, so residential summer study programs. So sometimes universities like uh, UC Irvine had a, has a medical program where you can go and you can actually stay at the university for two to three weeks. So you're actually on campus. You're getting kind of an experience of being in college. You're there with other high school students. Don't worry, they're supervised. Um, but it's an opportunity for them to kind of get their feet wet with being away from home. And for you guys to get your feet wet with them being away from home. You know, because you got to have to used to that too. Uh, so sometimes they'll take one or two classes there. They get some hands-on experiences. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of variety out there. So whatever a student's drawn to, you can find something out there for them. Travel options. So, a lot of times parents like to travel over the summer, that's fine. There are other programs here. Um, there's immersion programs. There's, like I know some of our students have used like Rustic Pathways, and they went to Thailand, or they went to uh, the Philippines, and they go there for a couple weeks, they do some service projects over there, and it's a great experience. Um, but that's another awesome opportunity for them to kind of explore the world a little bit and to interact with people from around the country, if not the world, okay? Immersion programs, so most of the immersion programs you're gonna find out there have to do with Spanish immersion. Uh, so a lot of times you're gonna be maybe set up with a family um, in a different country, you'll be speaking their language, you'll be kind of learning their customs, but that's kind of the immersion program. Sometimes there's different classes that are associated with those programs that students can take just to further their knowledge. 
Oftentimes, those immersion programs are community service based. Uh, they want them going into the community, learning about the different cultures. Because you know, you can hear about it all you want, but once you're, you know, in a village or something, and you're talking with the people that live there, that's really where you start learning and realizing there's more to the world than just right around. So the other fun part, uh, especially going into your senior year or junior year is prepping uh, applications. So the, the juniors right now, uh, second semester, we are going to be doing you know college workshops to get them starting to think about it. But the summer between junior and senior year is a great time to start thinking about applications, doing all that fun stuff. Uh, SAT, ACT prep. So for any juniors that started taking the testing and maybe know that they want to in the fall, you know this is a great time to prep. Okay. We have up there Khan Academy and Schmoop. Those are both free programs that your students can use. Schmoop is paid for by the school through the library. And both of these programs allow you to have a very individualized test taking plan. All right, it's all done online. So you sit down and it'll say, okay, this week these are your assignments. And it'll have you know, lessons, quizzes, it'll have full length tests. It's really great. The Khan Academy. All the students just got back their PSAT scores. All right, so the sophomores and juniors got their PSAT scores back. On that is a little individualized code that if you put in a Khan Academy, does that whole program where it gives you the individualized. So it'll identify if your weakness was in math and geometry, it's gonna have you practice that more, okay? Uh, visit college campuses. So this is a great time that if you guys are traveling and you know that there's some colleges around where you're going that your students might be interested in, Go take a look at. You know, keep in mind though that it's going to be a little bit different than how it is during the school year. All right, there won't be as many students on campus, but they at least get a feel for what the campus is like, where it's located, what the community is like around it, and you guys can kind of see it as well. All right, so always going to see colleges is great. Um, they, the juniors can begin to that are going to be seniors can begin writing their uh, personal statements. Okay, all those prompts are online. They can start thinking about different topics they want to do, writing rough drafts, they can start all that. Uh, we will be talking about it, I think, on the next one. We're going to, we have our boot camp that we run every year. Boot camp's an opportunity, we run it the couple weeks before school starts, once the applications open up on October 1st. Um, students that are in the boot camp, by the time they're done, they're pretty much done with their UC apps, their common apps, and they have at least a rough draft done of their essay. So it's a great opportunity for them to get a head start before school even starts. Um, so working on your college list, updating your resume. So if you're going to visit colleges, then working on your list. Where am I at? Do I have 30 schools on my list right now and I need to narrow it down? Do I have one school on my list and I need to add some in? This is a good time to have them kind of sit down and start thinking about what is it that I really want in a school? Um, where is it, as far as, it, is it a reach school, a target school, a safety school, working on that list over the summer. So that way when they start senior year, they're ready to go. Okay? So, the boot camps. Um, and also some other great links. So, on our Blackboard page, which you guys will have to use your students' login information to get to their counseling Blackboard page. If you get that from them, you log into their Blackboard, you're going to see the counseling page for them. When you go there, if you go to external links, there's a lot of links there to community service places, scholarship links, um, all types of areas that you might want to go and start exploring. It has uh, different summer programs, so anytime we hear about different programs, we'll put it on there. We'll put it through Naviance so that they have access to it. You guys probably get emails all the time from us regarding different scholarships and programs when we hear about them. Uh, Mr. Fuller does a great job of getting that information to you guys. Uh, we have volunteering, different STEM programs, summer programs. And this will be up on our counseling page, so don't worry about writing down the links. It will be there and you guys can look at this. And we have the college application boot camp, like I said. Um, yeah, we actually bring in English teachers to work with your students on the essays. So the first part of the day, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the application, we'll have them filling in out certain parts, and then we split up into two groups. So 
one group goes and works with the English teachers while one group stays with us and really digs into their specific applications and asks questions and then we kind of switch. But it's a fantastic opportunity that a lot of students take advantage of. So, uh, at this point, you know, you kind of heard a lot of different opportunities that are out there. What we would like to do and what we found very valuable is to have our own students that have done a variety of programs here come up and tell you a little bit about the programs they've done and then also give you guys an opportunity to ask them any questions about you know, how they found out about certain programs or anything that you guys kind of have questions about. Um, students, would you like to come up? Uh, so these are all seniors that we've identified as counselors, as people who have done these amazing things with their summers. That pretty much touches on all of these things. And a, none of them were chosen because they went to boot camp, but a lot of them did go to boot camp, so you can also ask, um, ask them about that. Um, we do ask though that, you know, just kind of keep it to the summer opportunities. Um, and, you know, some of their, their personal information is, it's embarrassing if they get asked. <laughs> so, um, guys, what we'd love for you to do is kind of go through, tell them your name, uh, tell them the summer program you did, maybe the best thing that you got out of that at this point. Okay. No. I'm Natalie, and um, so mine wasn't really a program. I'll tell you. So, the summer before my junior year, I was talking with my parents, and I, well, okay, let me start back. So I played the ukulele, and I played that for a long time now, and I um, was talking to my parents, and I realized I wanted to use my love of the ukulele to help other people. So we decided, with the help of my family, I started um, a nonprofit organization, and so the summer, before my junior year, like I said, that's when we really had to, like, do a lot of research on how to start a nonprofit, and that's in that time we started. We like so we had to do a bunch of legal stuff. So it's actually, and through those summer months, it became um, a 501c like tax exempt government recognized nonprofit. So that's really cool. And I forgot to say what it is, but basically we spread happiness through the ukulele by giving ukuleles to music therapists at, in hospitals and playing in convalescent homes and just giving lessons to anyone. And all this summer, this past summer, going into my senior year, uh, we teamed up with another nonprofit and we made videos like tutorials um, so those were more accessible to anyone. But yeah, so if anyone, if any one of your students wants to help out with that, um, that we're always looking for volunteers too. If they know or don't know how to play the ukulele, they can learn. Or filming videos, or just doing anything. What's the name of the nonprofit? Oh, it's called Heartstrings. Okay. Okay. Um, oh yeah. um, <laughs> um, my name is uh, Ronnie Mansour. Um, I. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna jump in. So um, this summer, um, I did two different programs. Um, I'm a classical musician, um, and so one of the programs that I did was specific to that. Um, it, took, it, was in, uh, it was at Bowdoin College in Maine, um, so it was really far away. It was cold, even in the summer. Um, and I was there for um, around three weeks, um, and it was, it's, uh, it's not a music, it, it's called BIMF, it's Bowdoin International Music Festival, and it's not a music festival like Coachella or Stagecoach or anything like that. It's just, um, it's not very many high school students. Um, it's mostly college students. Um, at conservatories and graduate students as well and it's like a music intensive and you go and you're involved in chamber music and you get to stay in the dorms basically um, eat in the cafeteria and you basically get to stay on a college campus um, for three you can stay for three weeks or you can stay for six um, I stayed for three um, because I was going to my next uh, summer program uh, which was at the University of Notre Dame um, and Notre Dame has a bunch of different summer programs that they offer um, and one of them is called uh, Notre Dame Summer Leadership Seminars. Um, and so that's actually something that you apply to. And they accept about 80 to 90 students. And if you get in, um, they will pay for you to go. So they'll pay for your flight. They'll pay for everything. 
Um, so it's, it's not something that uh, you apply for and you can pay to go, um, but it's almost like applying to college um, early. <laughs> and um, so it, it's, it's a competitive program, um, but it's really, really rewarding. And um, they have three different seminars. I was a part of the American, Al American Arts, Pop Culture, and Social Change program. They also have one rooted in science and one um, about global issues. Um, so those are the three different ones. They accept about 30 kids in each seminar. Um, again, that, is, that was about 10 days, and you get to stay on campus. Um, it's directly uh, involved with Notre Dame, so it's not just at Notre Dame, but it's actually Notre Dame's program. Um, and if your student is interested in that school, um, it, they really like to see some interest there, um, I'd say. Um, so yeah, and that was just a really, really rewarding program. It's kids all over the country, kids internationally. Um, I had friends there from Korea and from several countries throughout the world. So it was just a really great experience. Um, and yeah. Hi, my name's Hannah. I, I took part in the Even Jean Black Summer Medical Career Program. It is a basically a shadowing experience for high school students in 11th and 12th grade to shadow doctors in hospitals for two weeks. And you shadow a different doctor pretty much every half day. So one morning I could be in surgery, the next I could be in like the cath lab. Like it was, I didn't actually do like any medical procedures because <laughs> I don't have a license. But um, I was watching really complex surgeries and being in the room with the surgeons. And that was probably the most rewarding part for me was being able to see the ins and outs of daily life working in a hospital with all different uh, medical professionals. And it like really confirmed for me what I, that I wanted to do something in medicine. What was the program called again? Eve and Jean Black Summer Medical Career Program. It's through the Los Angeles Pediatric Society. You like apply for a ho like a certain hospital. They have like I think ten or fifteen hospitals that you can pick from, and I picked the one that was closest to my house. And, and but it's like I did it at Tarzana Hospital. Uh, they have it at UCLA, one at USC, another one in Simi Valley, all over the place. Um, uh, for the past two summers, I've had internships at UCLA Civil and Environmental Engineering Laboratories. Um, so my first summer, I, uh, <coughs> I, I contacted a professor at UCLA and I sent in my resume and I asked if they would have any opportunities for a high school student. Um, and I had to get certified in lots of different classes, so I actually was on the campus at UCLA for a week and I had to take different classes to get certified in like lab safety, uh, medical waste management, all these things that I got to put in my college apps later, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I got certified in these classes, and then I went to the lab, and I was working with graduate students and the professor who was in charge of the lab and undergraduate students who were there. And in my first summer, uh, the lab was with Dr. Jane. It was focused on public health. So I got to partake in two uh, lab research kind of opportunities. The first one was studying the levels of mercury in the hair of autistic children versus in the hair of typical children. And we saw that with typical children, if you eat more fish, you have more mercury. It's like a direct line. But in like autistic children, you could eat no fish at all. But if you just have one, your mercury levels could spike. So it was a huge health problem that um, I helped uh, coordinate getting those samples and um, studying that research and working with the machine. Um, and so they're going to publish a paper about it, and my name's going to be listed on it as someone who's helping us with it. And I also helped with other graduate students in that lab that were doing whatever projects, because I was there for six weeks from eight to five every day, so I had a lot of opportunities to help. Um, and then while I was there in my first summer, uh, the labs was kind of, this was Dr. J's lab, and there were two more labs. So I went into one one day, and I said, hi, can I like speak to whoever's in charge here? And they, uh, the professor came out, Dr. Mahendra, and she said hi, and I talked to her for a little bit about my experience and what I was doing, and she gave me her contact information, so the next summer I contacted her and said, hi, this is my resume, I worked in Dr. J's lab, is there any way that I can get an uh, internship here? And so she gave it to me because she talked to Dr. J and saw all that I had done. Um, so I got an internship again last summer, but this lab was focused on microbiology, and I was working with two different undergraduate, or two different graduate students. Um, one of them was with a uh, there was a contaminated uh, soil in Maine, I think it was, from 
uh, industrial sites there, so they were looking on using bacteria to try and clean up that mess without damaging the environment. So I got a lot of work with the machines there and uh, anaerobic glove boxes and lots of pipetting, lots of pipetting. So it's a lot of experience, and I ended up writing about it on my college app essay because I learned a lot of things from it. So it was great to be a part of it. Hi, my name is Vicky Belusian. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. So, um, this summer I wanted to travel somewhere, but I wanted to make sure that my summer fully really counted and I wasn't just traveling to see different places. So, a summer before my junior year, my friends had gone with a program called Service to Armenia, where for a month they traveled all the way to Armenia, which is about a nice 13 hour flight. And they did different things. They worked with orphans, they worked with special needs kids, and they built <coughs> schools, and they built playgrounds. And for me, that was something I was really, really interested in, because not only was I going to a place where my family had come from, but I was going to be doing something that made an impact on the country once I left. So once I arrived there, me and a group of about 21 other kids around my age, it was anywhere from 17 to 20 years old. That was the typical age range that was in the group. And we stayed in a place right outside of the capital, and we'd go to different cities and different schools within Armenia, and we just work with the kids. And it really meant a lot because it's not like out here where there's a lot of summer programs where your kids get to go to summer camp and have a really great time. It's a, lo a lot of people live in poverty there. So for that short time that you're there, you get to work with the kids. We threw a carnival at, and there's a city there called Gyumri. It's one of the poorest cities in Armenia. And we threw a carnival for the kids, and they just had such a good time. Like you could see on their faces that they were really happy. And once I left, I was I felt really, really happy with what I had done because not only had I become really, really good friends with people I went on this trip with, I made a bunch of little children very happy. And we did a lot of physical labor too at the schools along with working with the, with the kids. I painted walls, I laminated floors, I painted ceilings. So it was definitely a very well-rounded experience. I would recommend it to anyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sam Bobbitt, and I worked in the last two summers as an intern for a defense attorney in Sherman Oaks. And so my first summer, it was really like about shadowing and going to a lot of courthouses. I went to about five, two years ago, and I really got to know what it consisted of, what the law was like, and I really got to see a lot of court cases from like, uh, tra like traffic tickets to murders. So it was very interesting. And I got a lot of connections through that. I talked to uh, a lot of lawyers as well as judges. And so in my second year, it was really cool. My boss got uh, a segment on KTLA 5, the news, about like, crime, crime Watch and like talking about the laws. So I, I, wrote, a, I wrote a lot for her on the script. So I got like, that part of the law also. I got to know like, really into all law aspects. And I just felt like it was a really good experience. And her name's Allison Treasel. So if you want your kid to be in that, it's, it's really interesting. And um, during the, my first year, I, I just got my license. And I was driving all over the place to a bunch of courthouses, some in like Ventura, Newport. And so it really helped me with my work experience, as well as driving everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. so now I'm a very confident driver. <laughs> it's just, like, opened me up to a lot of the, like, what, what I would do when I'm older. I'm still considering what I want to do, either business or law. So it really, like, gave me a perspective on what I wanted to do. Thank you. Hi, my name is Justin Durden. I'm a senior here. Um, I did two major things over these past summers I've been in high school. The first would be volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club in uh, Simi Valley. I've vlogged over, I believe, 300 hours um, through the high school time and then another 200 through middle school. So I have over 500 hours um, A volunteer. I do mentoring, we uh, run programs, we do carnivals for the kids. Um, I really liked it. I really liked being a part of it because I went there when I was a child. I went there. It's in my community. It's somewhere I really like to be at. And I feel like it's really giving back to the community. The second thing I do is I've been working at Islands Restaurant in Simi Valley. I've worked there since I turned 16. Around maybe two weeks after I turned 16, I really wanted somewhere so I could make an income. I had my car. I could put my own gas in there. I could go my own places, you know. And it was something that 
I kind of took initi initiative to do. My parents didn't push it at all. They were willing to you know, pay for what I wanted to do, but I wanted to kind of do it for myself. Um, I've been promoted twice since I've been there, and so now, as soon as I turn 18, I can become a server, which is great when I go to college. Um, and yeah, that's it. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Azuloza, and for the past two summers I've done three-week residential programs at Stanford University. And so basically, the way to get involved with this, there's an application that you have to fill out, and you usually have to fill it out in January of the year that you want to do the summer program. And I mean, it's basically like a mini college app, it gets you started in the process early. I had to get teacher recommendations, I had to like write essays to get accepted into the program. Um, and yeah, so the program's three weeks and it takes place from about mid-June to about early July. Um, and it's nice, I was able to meet a bunch of people from all over the country, all around the world. I went into the program not knowing anyone. Um, and I've done this twice for two summers and there's about 40 kids um, each time. And I came away knowing like all of them, like they were my new best friends. And it was really great because you know, I went into them not knowing him. Um, and so in the summer of 2015, my uh, program was about business and it was about negotiation. And it was really cool, I got to do a bunch of like one-on-one -on -one things where I was like, they would give us a situation. For example, like, I'd be a venture capitalist and I'd be negotiating to try to buy out a part of a company. Or I would do other things, they taught us how to make uh, better decisions and we evaluated uh, certain decisions that were facing major corporations or major governments and anything like that. Um, and since I actually love sports, I talked about the potential of an NFL team moving to Los Angeles, and that's actually come to fruition since uh, I was going to talk about that. Um, and then in the summer of 2016, I did the program once again, and it talked about politics and public policy. Um, and it was nice to do it during an election year but I'm sure it's also fun when it's not, but we were able to talk about a lot of the issues that were um, important on the campaign trail. We were able to talk about the different campaign strategies, the campaign finance sources, and all that, and it was really awesome just being able to do it on a college campus and kind of having that independence. It was only three weeks, but you know, you had to learn how to do your laundry, all those little <laughs> things that you, know, you don't really think of that you know, you're gonna have to learn for college. Um, so yeah, it was a great program. I definitely recommend it. Um, I had a lot of fun, and I was also able to learn a lot um, not only in the classroom, but about college life. Uh, this is college student. Did you do business both, both summers? Uh, no, the first one was about business and negotiation, and the second one was about politics. Oh, What's the program called? It's called Stanford Pre-Collegiate Summer Institutes. Okay. okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Josh, and the program I got involved with was the Mining My Story Social Entrepreneurship Camp, and how I got connected to that was kind of funny. They wanted me to go to that camp since it first started, but I always couldn't go because of a prior commitment. And then I got a position as a national spokesperson, and they were kind of, and they were like, "Well, you got to go if you want, if you want." So I was like, "Okay, I guess I get an excuse to go now." And it was really fun because this was the first summer we were out of the Shaman community. We were at UCLA for for a week in the inner. Anderson School of Management, and it was really cool because for me, I was, I'm still really considering social entrepreneurship as a potential major, and what that means is it's taking a, it's taking a social issue and making change with it. So, and well, the organization itself stands for, or stands on empathy driving change. So the first part of the week, we understand stories and the importance of a story, and then, and then the second half of the week is how you could take that story and make a change from it, and not just like, like it's good to raise money for a cause, but it's another thing to like solve something at the root problem, and we were able to really dissect, ask questions, figure out tactics as to how we can solve things at the root problem. And it was really cool, because then at the end of the week, we got, we had this huge banquet to celebrate us becoming change makers, and it was in, it was in the Wooden Hall of Fame, which is really cool, and I got to speak there, so that was awesome. And this summer is really cool because now we're going to have two, one in Ventura County, one in LA County, one is going to be at CSUN, not confirmed dates yet, and the other one is at CSU Channel Islands, which is end, end of July to early August. So I highly recommend it because because I, I always have kid or kids or students come up to me and they're like, well, you do this, so how do you create change? And it's like, well, come, come to this and we'll teach you how you can create the change. Cause because it's the youth that's really going out there and they're making the difference and that's something I firmly believe in and 
I have not heard one person that's left the camp that hasn't been confident in going out in their community and creating the change. So. Yeah, I did not know what I wanted to do. 
or any special. program or like where to go, yeah. or like a job or volunteer. Like he's just clueless. <laughs> I feel like. Okay. Um, for me, I've always had an interest in science and medicine, so I knew I wanted to do something eventually. Right. I didn't really pay attention. I think. It was junior year when I started getting the emails from my counselors like, this summer opportunity, this summer opportunity, and like beginning of junior year I didn't really pay attention to them. I think then my mom came to a college and coffee and was like, I heard about this, you need to apply. Uh, and so I looked into it, I found other ones that I was interested in and I applied. So I think it's really, for me it was honing in on what I was interested in. So that helped me find programs to do during summer. If your son can just find what he's interested in, then maybe that will help. And we don't have an athlete on the panel, but a lot of times, as any of you who are parents of athletes know, it becomes a year-round thing as well. Well, that's also a productive summer, right? They're not at the school. I, I don't mean nobody talked about it. I apologize. We have a lot of athletes on the panel. None of them talked about to be an athletic summer. But who did, who did, did anybody do athletic stuff in the summer? That's what I meant. Oh, that was summer. I mean, Yeah, I apologize. They're very athletic. Do you ever have these students talk to students? We were prepared for that question. We get that question every year, and it's an excellent idea, and it's an excellent question, and we haven't kind of figured out how to make that happen. But we have a college week coming up in, I think, February. That's the same week as the middle school. For any of you who are middle school parents, they do a college week. So he and I were just talking about talking about it at our department meeting next week about how to make that happen for them. really beneficial. Yeah. The problem, to be honest with you, is, is mostly what we have to do is do it in an end-block time or after-school time, and the kids are so busy during those times. We try to do that. Um, coming back in January with alumni coming back and talking to our seniors, and I invited 102 alumni, and only one said yes, and only three said no, and 97 didn't apply. Didn't no. apply. So um, it's, it's sometimes hard to figure out their schedules, how to get them to do it on the free time, but it's definitely on our agenda, I promise. I have two questions. One is for you who works at Island. Do you find that they're pretty flexible with scheduling as far as like when you have conflicts or having to rearrange things? Does that, is it a hassle or does it work out? <laughs> no, well, Restaurants, it's perfect. That's why I, that's one of the reasons I only apply to restaurants is because their hours are so flexible. Um, we have a lot of college students there, so a lot of 18, 19, 20 year olds that work there and they go to like Moore Park and you know schools around here. And they are very willing to like work with your schedule. So you kind of tell them this is when I can work and they can see if that works with their schedule, then they'll have you know, it's kinda like that too. Where I currently only work Friday through Sunday, which is only three days, which is really great. So then during the week I can do my homework, you know, whatever school events we have here, I can participate in them. And then as long as you let them know, I believe like three, two or three weeks in advance, they can they can adjust your schedule. If you have something you have to do or you're going to be somewhere, they help you out. So it's really, yeah, it's really great. They're really flexible. And then my other question is that you brought up about uh, doing athletic things in the summer. So that is something relevant to put Absolutely. on the yeah, absolutely. You know, because they, they, they ask, they get asked on applications, how many hours a week, how many hours a month do you spend on this this thing? You know, for some of those kids, it's 20, 30 hours a week, so they can't do something else even if they wanted to, or it, or it's limited time, but they can do something else. Um, that's, and that's what I meant, I know. So Sam is a varsity golfer, and I want you to talk a little bit about, I know him because I wrote his letter of recommendation, so I know him without him putting on the spot. Um, he, he second this second summer he did a lot of writing. He did a writing for a website and writing for but talk honestly about kind of the impression you got about law. About law? Uh -huh. Um like I was really interested in it and like starting I do youth and government through the YMCA. So it's all about like the government in California, it's a mock government and like about three thousand five hundred kids do it in California and we go to like meetings and stuff. And so I did the court program there, and I, I started to learn a lot about like bench trial, and I had a good understanding of like what consists in a courtroom, and it just really interested me. And so when I heard about like this internship through a mom at my old Little League, so I asked this lady, uh, Allison Treasel, if I could intern for her, and she was very accepting, and she said yes. 
And so I, I just I just feel like I I've gotten a I've gained a big interest in law over the years. And it's definitely something I want to do in the future. So you were able to balance golf during the summer with the internship? As well? Yeah, de definitely. Uh, I did a couple tournaments over summer, and it never conflicted with me. I worked about 30 hours a week over six weeks this summer, and it, it just wasn't a problem. I would only practice when I'm not working, so it wasn't, really wasn't a problem at all. Sorry, any other questions or anything for our students? <clears throat> now, again, we do these collagen copies for your information, not to raise your anxiety. And, I, and, <laughs> and I, I, I work with parents all the time, we all do. And what I hear is, well, I hear that, you know, Susie's doing 500 hours of service and Jimmy's doing, you know, uh, hospital work and so-and-so. And parents seem to kind of feel like their child needs to do it all. And it's really important, like um, Ms. Stone said in the very beginning, um, colleges want to see commitment and leadership to maybe two things. Uh, I, don't, I don't like to put a number out there, so pretend I didn't say two, but not, they know you can't show that kind of commitment and leadership to 10 things or 50 things, or they're even talking about you know reducing the number of spots on the application for putting your activities so that they can only identify a couple activities because they know that kids get burnt out if they try to do it all. So, um, you know, listening to all these people, they, they, they don't do it all. You know, Sam had to kind of figure out how to do his 30 hour week job with his golf. Um, some of them maybe had to pick up their club teams in the summer because this is what they wanted to do instead. Um, but it's important that you, you know, kind of just help your child keep balance and identify what it is. And freshmen may don't, maybe don't know. You know, freshmen maybe don't know, sophomores maybe don't know what their passion is. But as parents, sometimes we can talk about, like, it seems like you really like blah, blah, blah. Do you really like that? Do you want to try something out for a day? Um, but but really letting them take the initiative and move in the direction that they um, that they want helps them. Um, during freshman year, my mom was really getting on me about, like, joining clubs and stuff and, like, college, college resume when I was a freshman. And so I joined about like 10, 10 clubs, and it just was a huge commitment. Barely went to any of the meetings, and it like it doesn't look good when you're not showing like commitment towards like a certain thing. And it's definitely quality over quantity, I'd say. So like um, I I feel like it looks better for from colleges' perspectives when they see you've been in a program for four years, you've been in a leadership position, and it definitely makes a difference. I just want to quickly so add. Because <laughs> mine only wants to be bad. Yeah. Yeah, just quickly adding on to that, the, the really good thing that I think about Shalma that I don't care about other schools is how many opportunities we have here. Like if there's something you're interested, like just a slight bit, try it, and if it doesn't work out, then work on something else. Like kind of like what Sam said, I think I joined like eight clubs in my <laughs> freshman year. I only went to two meetings and I well, I only pursued one, but it was like just the fact that like I joined freshman year, there was a rocket club, and then there was My Name, My Story, and then there was Reach for the Stars, and there was Habitat for Humanity. There was just so many options for me that it's like if I couldn't find something there, then there was something there. And, he, and then even, I think someone brought up emails, I'm getting these emails from counselors. Like the counselors are, like if you go to your counselor and say, I'm interested in this, what is, are some things I can do? And they can refer you to on-campus things or even off-campus things. Like if that's something you're interested in furthering, then Definite, then there, then Shama is definitely going to help you or help your student find where they're at. Because I know I can definitely speak on that. And I agree wholeheartedly with what Sam said. Um, something also is that if you don't find an interest in a club here, you can start your own club at the end of a year. So at the end of last year, a couple of friends and I we started a club. It's called the Homeless Hearts Club. We're working on helping homeless people and <coughs> doing food drives and just, so if you don't find an interest like in your club, or in a club or organization already established on campus, you have the opportunity like to start your own. So I think that's really great. Yeah, I was just also gonna say, um, as, you, as you get older in high school, um, the different courses that you can take also become much more diverse. And so I'm, like you were saying, um, you have a freshman who doesn't know 
I would want to do. I still don't know what I want to do. Um, but as I got older, and my junior year is when I started to take more classes that I became more interested in. Um, and because I was able to take things like three-dimensional art, and now I'm in musical theater, and like really specialized classes that they open up. Um, as far as the English courses this year, you can take whatever you want. Um, and I think that the, the more classes you take and the more you're exposed to, even not in clubs, even not outside of just academia, I think it's easier to kind of find what you like and what you don't like because the options become um, so much less limited. Um, that was a bad way to put it, but there are a lot more things that you can do um, as you get older. So that will also, I think, help maybe your students discover what they like and what they don't like. Um, just going back off of what Josh said about the opportunities being at this school, um, when I applied for my job and I did my first interview, I got hired on the spot. And I've now been there for a year and a half. But about a year into it, I kind of talked to the manager who interviewed me about my interview and, you know, working on skills to kind of improve it. And one of the main reasons they said that they did hire me was because I went to this school and the reputation the school has. So. We did not pay them. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is 9 o'clock, so um, they actually have been excused from their entire class for, until 9.30, but I do want to um, honor all of your time restraints if you have to get somewhere. So uh, we are finished for today, and I did not acknowledge the counselor here. Mr. Bowles, Mr. Bond, Mr. Studio, Mr. Fuller, several in the back today. I don't know if I missed anyone. Um, so just to put names to face, we didn't have a measure. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.